all dominate our vernacular. David Cameron talks of tough love. The media report on the ASBO badge of honor. Is antisocial behavior a real concern? Or would the media and the government just have us think that? When you think of the word ASBO, what springs to mind? Um, a young person, probably a delinquent person, typically a male, I would say, probably in the age range of um, 13 to 16, probably have a hooded top, dark clothes, head covered a lot of the time, walk down with the head down rather than having the head up, probably wouldn't look you straight in the eye. Graffitis around the town. In public, like, um, mug somebody or something. Just for people vandalising and generally not being good to the country. Disrupting um, public areas. You know, go and burn cars or get drunk yeah, regularly. Basically, just be, just be antisocial. In public, throwing bottles, egging people. Thugs. Antisocial behaviour orders were introduced under the Crime and Disorder Act of 1998. They stipulate any person aged 10 or over that has acted in an antisocial manner that caused or is likely to cause harassment, alarm or distress to one or more persons not of the same household of the offender. As you can imagine, this broad definition has proved hard to enforce. This is Christine Graham, local community support manager. Draw a distinction between antisocial behaviour and neighbour disputes. So it's almost very vague about the definition of what antisocial is. And that's is. one of the things. I'm actually involved with the National Community Safety Network, which is a practitioner's organisation, national organisation, and one of the things that we've been doing is campaigning with the Home Office for a definition of antisocial behaviour, because that's one of the most difficult things that we have to deal with. The Home Office's intentionally wide-ranging definition is supposedly to allow for the orders to be used in a variety of circumstances. The vagaries of the ASBO are potentially both a blessing and a curse. Two people likely to have experience in this area are Sandy Kavanagh and PC Linda Maxwell, Community Safety Manager and Community Police Liaison Officer for South Castephen District Council respectively. What, what is um, uh, antisocial behaviour is a very, very yeah, wide a, definition yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, part of our role really is to educate people into what exactly is antisocial behaviour. Contextualise it within the community. And, and what it isn't. Antisocial behaviour, however generalistic, is still worthy of a civil order and potentially five years jail time. But it really does depend on how uh, we use this very, very powerful tool. And ASBO is a sledgehammer to crack a walnut. Obviously, there's a whole lot of antisocial behaviour, which is a crime. Local MP Quentin Davies points out the overlap between antisocial behaviour and crime. I mean, these are serious crimes. They're obviously antisocial behaviour of rather extreme kind. But then you get then you get things which can be covered by an antisocial behaviour order, but which aren't themselves necessarily crimes. What for example, sort of the yes, I mean, for example, making systematic and awful of noise uh, at night time, keeping people awake, either with loud music or banging on doors or something like that. There isn't a crime on the statute book. Uh, that says you can't bang on a door. And we don't want to criminalise people if we can possibly avoid it, so I think you start off with a warning. Um, if warnings from neighbours and things uh, don't work, then you have to have the police involved and they get a warning. Then if that doesn't work, you can apply for an antisocial behaviour order. And if that doesn't work, if the, in other words, the, the terms of the order are not observed, then you can go back to the court and at that point you can get a criminal conviction. Um, we use uh, an antisocial behaviour order, as I've said, uh, as a last resort. Um, we've got to um, try everything else out, uh, go to different agencies, look at different agencies, look at the different support the young person can have before we would resort to an antisocial behaviour order. My concern as a practitioner would be is that the, the, the idea that's been put about in public is that an ASBO is the answer. So people will ring me up and say, I'm ringing you because I want an ASBO on my neighbour. Right. Okay. That isn't the way we operate. It isn't something we get off the shelf and hand over. You know, it's about saying to them, tell us what the problems are you're experiencing and we will identify the most useful tool. I don't think that an antisocial behaviour should use, be used only as an last resort. Okay. I don't think an antisocial behaviour order should always be used. Are they, are they intended as a punishment? The way they are set up, 
within our legal system, they are a punishment. Because what they are doing is saying that that person is acting in a way that is antisocial and is causing a harassment, alarm and distress to other people, and that an order is needed to curb that. So in that sense, it's not a criminal penalty, but it is obviously a punishment in the sense that it will put restrictions on them. And it's got to be used in the, in the very last instance. So a civil order, you're saying, is better than being involved in the criminal justice system? Absolutely, yeah. and ASPO is a civil order. Yeah. Um, and it's far better to, to use an ASPO um, to control a person uh, than it is to criminalise them. Once they, they've got into the criminal um, system, the crime system, um, um, we, we, we don't want to know what's going to happen to that person. The sensitivity of council representatives isn't mirrored by the public. I think nowadays they're more of a, a medal of honour. If somebody's got an ASBO, then of course they go back to their mates and That's they want one as well, don't That's they? Interesting. Thing right. is, stop you doing it. So you, so you see don't someone's think... driving their car here and they shout out abuse at the window, yeah. right? And they'll build pull them up and give them ASBO. Ain't gonna stop them doing it again, is it? So you you don't think ASBO's an effect? ASBO's are rubbish. What, what's that? It's a paper. What's people gonna do? People can't do nothing how for do, this how country. How do you think we could improve that then? The law should be truck. They give them. See, the problem with this ASBO is they'll give them to too many people, but without enough, well, without reasonable judgment. ASBOs, though, despite popular opinion, do have their benefits. To the individuals, are they a big deal? Once I somebody receives one, is it a, a badge of honour or is it something I think, really different? I think that will depend on the individuals. We had um, one person who was a street sex worker and had been a, a prolific street sex worker in our city for a number of years and had been in and out of prison. It was a bit of a last resort, to be honest, that we went for an antisocial behaviour order and we were successful in obtaining that. For her, that was the turning point and made her realise that she couldn't continue with that lifestyle. She got the support that she needed and she's no longer living that lifestyle. That for me is a success, and yes, the ASPO achieved that where other things failed. If someone's behaving well, we can maybe allow them later at night in a certain area or sort of something similar. We have amended conditions in the past, and we're also considering discharging one because, because the behaviour has been so good. And that's a success at the end of the day. We certainly wouldn't keep an ASPO for two or three years if that person didn't, didn't serve up to be kept. So. I think the, the issue of the hype around whether they're a badge of honour, I think is unhelpful. I think for some young people, particularly, which is where the hype has come from about them being badges of honour, is around them being issued to you. Because there's a whole scope of age ranges that are affected. That's right, around. yes. Um, we don't only use antisocial behaviour orders on young people. In fact, we have used them almost half and half on adults and young people. Um, they're very sensationalist yeah. about um, mm -hmm. ASBOs. Um, secondly, they only seem uh, to publicise, shall I say, the balmy. As bows, you know the the woman who's yeah. feeding the pigeons and uh, the cockerel uh, crows to rise. That's yeah. right, and and the, um, the the suicidal woman uh, to keep away from bridges and multi-story car parks. I mean, absolutely ridiculous um, as bows that have reached the, the press, and that's the view or the perception that a lot of people mm. have got of as bows now. How big of a problem do you think it is in a county like Lincolnshire? It's quite a big problem. It's quite a big problem. Even in Ball, it, it is it is a problem. Um, in Grantham, which is the biggest town in my constituency, it's quite a significant problem, and a lot of people have their lives made of misery. And in Lincolnshire, there's been, I think, 29 Asbos yes. from 1999 to 2005, um, whereas Cambridge, there's been 89. Um, so do you attribute that to your, your, your being successful with um, being thrifty with an Asbo? Yes, yeah. I, I think we could say that. Uh, we are very thrifty right, so with other Asbos. Councils, but uh, could I also say that uh, Lincolnshire is a very low crime area? Right. Um, th there is a low population and there is a low crime rate in Lincolnshire. Um, but yes, it is uh, being thrifty with Asbos. When I spoke to the manager of a local shopping centre, he told me the problem with youth was a timeless issue. He quoted me Greek philosophy that children contradict their parents and tyrannise their teachers. And he told me that filming our documentary would merely perpetuate this image. I think it's clear from what we found out that being antisocial isn't inextricably bound to being young. Earlier when I spoke with Sandy Kavanagh, he told me that 60% of the people he works with 
or over 18 years of age. I have no